This is Junk Dump, and in this video I'm going to give you the facts on Oldsmobile oiling and oil restrictors. There are many misconceptions about Oldsmobile oiling, so what we're going to do in this video is try to talk about the absolute facts, like where exactly that oil gets carried from, carried to, um, how oil restricting works, and um, just the truth and I'll show you some examples using a block of exactly where the oil goes. So we'll start first with stock oil. You can see here the green line at the bottom that's the oil in the sump. It's going to make a turn through your pickup tube. Right here it enters the oil pump. The oil pump is going to put it under pressure. Now it's going to follow this passage up and to your oil filter where it's going to hit this passage that has a couple different ports. We'll the first port we'll follow is down to the main bearing. Now let's go to the block and show you this passage. So I'm just using WD-40, I'm going to squirt it through that channel and show you that it's going to pop out of the main bearing. Now let's take a look from the underside. So we'll start off by adding a bolt as that chamber runs behind that bolt. Then I'm going to spray some oil down into that chamber and you can see it's a straight shot right through to the oiling hole that goes right to the rear main bearing. Now that your rear main has oil pressure, there are small passages in your crankshaft that are going to bring that oil out to the connecting rod. Now there's a passage at the back that moves up and is going to oil the rear camshaft bearing. And then there's a passage that also heads up towards your right main gallery. Your right main oil gallery is going to be pressurized. And while that's happening, there are many things that get oiled, but let's just follow one path at a time. At the front of that gallery, there's an orifice in the plug and that allows oil to splash down into the front of your engine which is going to oil your timing chain and those front parts. Now the existing four passages are going to directly feed your main bearings. You can see all four of them here feeding down towards your main bearing. Your main bearing is then going to be pressurized with oil. And now that the main bearings are completely fed, you've got those small passages that lead out to your connecting rods. So now let's move to the front of the engine. I have the engine flipped upside down here so you can see. And I'm going to install that pipe. Now this is that feed line that goes from the gallery down to the main. And you can see no oil is coming out of any of the other passages, only straight from that feed. Nothing there, nothing there. Straight from that feed to where I've driven in that tube, which is your bearing. And now I'll move back to the number two main, and you can see I'm going to put that tube right into that channel that comes from the oil gallery straight to the main bearing. And as I'm spraying, you're not seeing any oil that's going into the camshaft bearing. So let's flip the engine over and we'll take a look at it from the underside and I'll show you where that oil is going. And here you can see the oil is coming out of the lifter bore which is connected to the gallery showing you that the gallery is connected to the main. Now with mains 1 through 4 pressurized you have another passage that leads up to the camshaft bearings. So camshaft bearings 1, 2, 3 and 4 are going to receive oil from this channel. So now let's move to the front of the engine. I have the engine flipped upside down here so you can see. And I'm going to install that pipe. And now you notice the oil coming out of the bearing hole. So this is what connects the main to the camshaft bearing. See all the oil coming out of the center? You'll notice the galleries. Nothing coming out of those galleries. It's all coming out of here. And now I'm moving back to the second main, and I've put that tube down that center hole. That is the, the passage that leads from the main up to, and you can see it right there coming out the camshaft bearing. Now at this point, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but just to mention, this would be where you would be putting those main restrictors in an old engine. 
And this proves that if you put a restrictor here, it's only going to restrict the oil that is headed toward the camshaft bearing. It has nothing to do with the passage that leads to the right main gallery, which is the feed for your mains. And the third passage connected to your front main is this angled passage that fills your left main oil gallery. This is where it would cross over and feed the other gallery. So you've got oil coming from your main down and you can see it's dripping out of the bottom here. This is where your oil pressure sending unit goes. So I'll plug that with my finger. And once we have enough oil, you'll see it starts coming out of the gallery. There you are. Again, nothing going to the camshaft bearing. The end of that left main gallery has a metered orifice that's going to splash oil on the back of the distributor and cam gear. And then as that left main was pressurized and the right main were pressurized, you have the oil coming up to feeding the lifters. Now the oil feeds through the lifters, up through those push rods, and when it reaches the top of the push rods, comes out by the rockers and it's going to oil the top end of your engine. And that concludes the stock oiling portion of this video. Now we're going to talk about restrictors and let's start by explaining why restrictors are needed. Now as you're watching this flow diagram go through again, we're going to focus on the two places where the stock oiling really runs into troubles. Now right here is the place where we start to see troubles in stock form. These passages that lead from the main bearings up to the camshaft bearings, particularly the second, third, and fourth in the middle there. That's where too much oil is actually getting up to those bearings. Now the other place that we can make improvements on the stock oiling have to do with the top end of the engine. Now if your engine's spending a lot of time at high RPMs, like in racing applications, there really is a little bit too much oil going to the top end, and therefore oil can start to pool and doesn't have a chance to come back down into the sump, uh, where you hear stories of people running their sumps dry and such. So that's another place where the stock oiling is a little inadequate. Now let's look at the oiling system in an Oldsmobile engine when you use restrictors. Now there are three restrictors that I use on every engine that I build, and they're the restrictors that go in these three passages right here that lead from your main bearings to the camshaft bearings. Now those are always inserted in just those passages, never the three passages that come down at an angle the main feeds to the bearings. Now in some cases, you may also want to restrict the top end because let's say you're using this in a racing application and you can get away with restricting the oil to the tops. Now some people use restricted push rods as you would see here indicated by the red and in some cases you use restricted lifters. Now we're going to ignore the lifters right now and just do a diagram based on using push rod restriction and the three restrictors that go in the main galleries there. So we're gonna start off in the sump like we did before, and you can see the oil enters the screen, goes through the pickup tube, and now the oil pump is gonna take that oil, pressurize it, and push it through the system. Now you've got this passage that leads up to the oil filter. The filter is gonna filter it, then it enters the block, and it reaches this intersection of passages. The first passage we're gonna follow goes down to the main bearing, and then of course you still have the oiling out to the connecting rod. Now notice at this point we have the oiling moving up to the rear main camshaft bearing, and you'll note there's been no restricting of this so far. Now we've got that main passage that leads up to feed the right main gallery. Now as the right main gallery is being fed, there are other offshoots that get fed at the same time, but we're just gonna do one at a time. So again, we've got that front port that's going to oil the front of your engine and the timing chain. Then you've got that angular main port that comes down for all of the one, two, three, and four main bearings. 
As you see, it's coming down. The restrictors do not affect the oil getting to your main bearings. Your main bearings still get fed in the exact same way. And now that the main bearings are completely fed, you've got those small passages that lead out to your connecting rods. At this point, everything's pressurized in the bottom end. You've got the oil passages leading up to the camshaft bearings, but you'll note here on two, three, and four, now it's restricted, as you can see by the orange. However, number one is still fed, and it doesn't affect the crossover that feeds the left main gallery. And the orifice at the left rear main gallery is going to feed oil to the distributor gear and the cam gear. At this point, both rails have been filled, so now the lifters are being fed. And once the lifters get fed, the oil moves up through your lifters, up to the push rods. And then they hit those restrictors at the top. And then the oil that comes out of and oils the top end is restricted. Not to the point where it's going to damage anything, but just so it gets enough oil, but not too much oil. Now let's go out to the engine. I'm using a welding nozzle because I couldn't find another restrictor. So with a restrictor in place, you can see once I push it down here that the oil feed passage from the gallery is not plugged or hindered in any way. Now in this picture, it may appear that the feed line is being restricted. When installed properly, that restrictor is going to pound down further into that feed line to your camshaft bearings and it will not restrict the feed lines going to the main bearings at all. Well that concludes my explanation of Oldsmobile oiling and how oil restrictors are going to work. I truly hope you found this helpful and um, again thank you for watching.